For more on this cultural touchdown, touchstone, we're joined now by Shelley Fisher Fishkin. She's co-director of a program at Stanford University that studies Chinese railroad workers. She is also an editor of the book, The Chinese and the Iron Road, Building the Transcontinental Railroad. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. So, you know, we know May is Asian American History Month in the United States. Do you think that Chinese Americans' contributions have been largely ignored in American history? Well, certainly their contribution to building the Transcontinental Railroad was ignored on the 100th anniversary of the railroad in 1969, when the official orator didn't mention them at all. Um, I think that this year it's clear that their contributions are going to be front and center of the commemorations, and our book and our project at Stanford was created to make sure that that would happen. Well, tell us more about the Chinese Railroad Workers in North America project there at Stanford. Um, what are you doing? What are you explaining? Tell us more about it. Well, we realized that Stanford University would not exist were it not for these workers. Leland Stanford's fortune came largely from the railroad, and they built it. It would not have happened without them. In fact, he testified to Congress in 1865 that they would not be able to complete the railroad in the time Congress required without these Chinese workers. So they did extraordinary work, blasting 15 tunnels through solid granite and working under extremely hazardous and difficult conditions. And we really wanted to make sure that we could recover as much as we could about who they were, why they came, where they came from, how their work here changed the lives of their families in China, and how it shaped the United States. That's amazing, because I didn't even know that. What has uh, been the one thing that has really s stood out to you in, in working on this project? I think it's how remarkably adept they were at doing railroad building, which was not something they'd ever had experience doing in China. But they turned out to be so remarkable at this that for 20 years after the Transcontinental Railroad was completed, um, they, were, they were summoned to work on building railroads all over the United States, not just the West, the Southwest, the Northwest, but also as far East as Long Island and New Jersey. Uh, I was also fascinated to learn that um, rather than all being unskilled workers, it looked like many of them were professionals, uh, nearly all of them, we've learned, could probably read and write in Chinese. And they were a very, uh, a very interesting and very mixed group of very, very hardworking and determined um, young men who were very, very good at sending money home to their families, which was one of the main reasons why they came. You know, a lot of people in the United States have heard of the Chinese Exclusion Act. And it's really been only seven or eight years since the US Congress expressed regret for it through a resolution. Um, is that surprising to you? Well, I mean, the Chinese Exclusion Act should never have happened in the first place. Um, the Chinese really accomplished a feat which enabled America to make its entry onto the stage as a modern nation. And instead of thanking them for it, uh, we ended up putting up with um, many racist and xenophobic anti-Chinese riots all across the West, and then finally the Exclusion Act, which, which uh, wasn't repealed in all of its incarnations, really, until 1943. So it's really a shameful chapter of America's past. And I think not only was the apology long overdue, but the recognition of the role that the Chinese played in building America is long overdue. Shelley Fisher-Fishkin, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. You're welcome.